Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, we're going to do a radio review today. As you know, I'm a ham radio operator. We've done a few radio videos in the past. You guys have demanded more, so I'm going to answer that call. Um, as you know, my favorite EDC radio since, I don't know, about a year and a half has been the Yaesu VX8DR. It's about a 10-year-old radio design. I picked it up used in very good shape, and I've put some good wear and tear on this thing over the last year. Now, over the last two weeks, we've had a wildfire. Uh, it's still fairly foggy out here. You can see that I have my sprinkler still set up on the fence to get plenty of water into the yard. This thing's not over yet. And I can tell you that having a good radio in the last two weeks has made all the difference in situational awareness for our family. Uh, we were hearing local fire, law enforcement, EMS, uh, and in real time as things unfolded. So, <clears throat> So we were able to make some of the decisions that we made uh, based on the information that I was hearing in real time. I rarely looked at social media during this time, last two weeks, and I rarely watch the news. It's not that it's bad to do that. They probably give you different information, and maybe it's usually what I found is it was several hours to a couple of days late. So uh, we talked about this being a great EDC radio. And any radio that, that has any sort of this these features on it are, is going to be good, but this is a particularly good radio. Now, what I wanted to get was something that was much more of a everyday, you know, throw it in the, in, you know, in the side by side or the ATV or throw it in the car and not have to worry so much about it. You know, this is a very expensive radio. Even even today, these things are still several hundred dollars. Whereas this one, you can pick up for about eighty-five dollars shipped. It's amazing. It's a really good value. Um, so we're going to do an in-depth review of the FT65 and just what I think about it. And I'm going to try to do it as in-depth as I can and, and kind of go over some stuff that I think is lacking from a lot of the reviews on this radio that have been done in the last two years. I hadn't even really thought about this radio until I started kind of looking at the specs on my own. And, and some of the stuff that you can do with it, especially with this extended menu that I'm going to talk about. Um, but I made the decision based on kind of hard research and I'm not disappointed. I think it's a fantastic radio. But let's get into it. Let's get into some details and I'll, I'll bring you in close so you can see what's going on. All right, now that we got you in close, got your attention, we have the Yaesu FT65 over here. The VX8 in the middle, my favorite. And of course, you have. there's no review that would be complete without comparing any radio to the uh, Baofeng UV5R, which we have right here. But let's get into it. All right, so you can kind of see the size comparison. If you, a lot of people are comparing this to a Baofeng, let's just take a look at the size. All right, you can kind of see it's not, it's not big. I, I could have borrowed um, D2S Dad's uh, Yesu FT60, which is slightly taller than this thing and slightly wider and much more old school. Very good radio, very good audio. Um, and you can see they're kind of going with the FT60-ish nomenclature there. Uh, to kind of tie that in and I don't, I don't know if that's going to be the case if you're going to want to compare it to that uh, You could but the FT60 is a die cast case. This is plastic polymer Some sort of uh, pretty durable plastic much like all these uh, the rest of these radios here But you can kind of see a size comparison. Let's just take a look at the thickness here Okay The FT65 is very brick like very square a lot of people compare it to a Baofeng. I don't, I don't see that resemblance. As a designer, the Baofeng has a lot of crazy things going on and separate elements. This is much cleaner, okay? I would equate this more to like a Motorola commercial radio uh, with some of the details. It just looks more Motorola to me. I don't know why. And then it has this tactical PTT button, which is fantastic. But let's, let's start the review in, in, normal, in a normal, uh, logical fashion. Um, you can kind of get the size comparison. We'll bring these back in if we need them. Put those aside. And let's look at the back here. The clip, start from back to front. How about that? Make it logical. The clip is great. Um, it's, it is a, it, it's easy to, it, it's got a really good spring action on it. Really easy to uh, take it on and, off a, on, a, on and off of a belt clip. I mentioned that because the uh, VX8, I, I broke the clip off of it, actually, you know, $450 radio and you break the clip off and I had I had to put another one of these. I think this is from the FT3. It's the same battery. And this is really stiff. You know, hard to get on and off of your belt, right? But this is just great. 
And the reason I mention this is because this is a die cast piece right here. This is plastic. The, the part with the spring on it is die cast. So I, I think that that's going to be pretty strong. It's not stamped. It's, yeah, it's die cast. I mean, it's, it's great. And unlike the FT3 and the VX8, it's not stuck to the battery. What a pain. Okay. They did it right. They stuck it to the housing uh, of the radio. Let's go to the battery. Lithium ion. I think this is about a 1900 milliamp. I did get a spare over here. Let's take a look. I think it's a, what is this thing? Yeah, it's a 1950 milliamp. Yeah, 1950 milliamp battery. Pretty thin, pretty light. Let's take that off. Um, some people were mentioning the latch system on this, and they, they made it sound like it was an FT60 kind of fold-over latch. I, I didn't find that. It was a, it's more of a switch, right? You can slide it in and out. Uh, so there you have the housing. Now let's let's talk about something really interesting. You mentioned I mentioned how, so I mentioned how everybody compares this to a Baofeng. Oh, it's really good. It's a Yesu Chinese radio. It's a competitor. It's made in China. Made in China. You know, oh, the pricing is the same. It has a reverse SMA connector on the antenna, which we'll talk about. It has similar features. Okay, it must be made in China. Mine's not. You see that? Mine's made in Japan. I know the earlier editions were, uh, but mine is actually made in Japan. Uh, there was kind of a debate on the Yesu Facebook forum a little bit about that. Uh, as my understanding is that even if they're made in China, they still have to send them all back to Japan to get a QC'd or whatever. <clears throat> so, not that that matters really that much, but, you know, some people are concerned about country of origin. I know Yesu is a Japanese company, and this is, in fact, a Japanese-made radio. Interesting. So why are we comparing it to a Baofeng? You know what I'd compare it to? Other Yesus. It's just me. That's just me, though. All right, let's move around the side here. Uh, speaker mic, uh, headphone area, okay, or programming cable. Uh, I like this door. Uh, you know, a little pet peeve of mine with a lot of the Yesu products is that they have these uh, rubberized doors on them. And you can see, this isn't, when I got this a year ago, this looked brand new. Now it's worn out. And the more you use these to charge up stuff, they start cracking, and then eventually these will break and fall off. And then in this case, this is a submersible radio. Now you don't have any waterproofing. I don't like that at all. And that's be always been that way with, with the ASU radios. Plus, if it's a speaker mic that goes in here, like the uh, FT60 or the VX5, uh, it's just an eighth-inch uh, phone jack, and it'll pop out. That's not good. It's not what you want. So I prefer this style. Now this has a nice door. It's not a live hinge like piece of plastic. It actually has a hinge. I wish it was a little heavier duty. It might seem a little weak, but it looks like it has a gasketing material here. Plus, when you look closely, you can't see this in the video, but this is a rubberized gasket, very similar to a VX5 and an FT60, right? So when you put your uh, mic in there, it actually should make somewhat of a ceiling surface. I don't know why this is threaded, uh, I'm guessing they, they're going to have a, a waterproof mic, maybe. I'd love it if it was threaded because it wouldn't come out. Uh, but usually with these dual pin connectors, they don't have that problem. But this is a nice, um, you know, if you want to compare side by side, this has a plastic live hinge, which is, I don't know if it's going to break, but it just seems weak and kind of flimsy and there's no gasketing. It's just really terrible, uh, you know, plastic on that. This is rubber. It's nice, really nice. Let's see, let's go to the PTT side here, the business end of this thing. I like this PTT button, really. It's, it, it fits my hand. I like the angled effect. Uh, it works good this way, right-handed or left-handed. Uh, however you wanna do it this way, it, it wor really does work good. Uh, similar buttons, and it's kind of a carryover, you know, a slight, you know, evolution of the VX series. I really think this could have been a VX radio. I, I think it could have been. Uh, what a shame. Anyways, I love it though. I love the PTT switch. Really good. Uh, buttons. Let's move around to the front before we turn this thing on, power it up. Oh yeah, top button. Well, you know. They should have done that. Why? Why do you guys? Why do they put an orange button on? You don't need to put an orange button on a, and a little flashlight on your radio. You just don't need it. Make it tan, make it gray or black. It, it 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 ruins it. I think it it then it all of a sudden oh we've made it into a Baofeng. Why? Why? The price is the price is phenomenal. Yeah, I don't like that. 
Maybe I could, maybe I could paint it. I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> front end here. Uh, this is your flashlight. Let's turn it on. Asu FT65 powers up, tells your volts. Uh, let's talk about this button. Of course, you got a little flashlight. It's easy. If you hold it down, it's an alarm kind of thing. Goes back to your home channel and beeps. I don't, I don't really care about that feature at all. Um, these are programmable. One, two, three, and four. You have three. You have four programmable buttons. All of them uh, operate off of the, this idea right here. This, this bottom button is your function button. This is your squelch button. Hold it down opens your squelch. This one, watch, if you push it once, you get a little function thing up there. Okay, that, that, that opens up several things. A lot of people have said that there are very few shortcut keys on the FT65. Not true. You just have to figure out where they're at. 